Hello, hi, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing okay. Hey, so it's October, it's uh, spooky season, and you know what that means. 50% off candy days coming up and you gotta get up early or else they're gonna be sold out. Early bird gets the gummy worm after all. <laughs> no, seriously, I think we all like to enjoy some candy around this time of year, as well as watch some horror movies and maybe read a spooky story or two. As an adult, I love all things creepy and horror, but I actually wasn't always like this. When I was a child, I was a put. Uh, I mean, I was a scaredy cat. I was scared of so many things. Mirrors, the dark, the cover for the movie Mom's Out of Sight, the jinx on the 1999 Pokemon puzzle. Hell, my brother was walking me to the public restrooms and standing outside of the door until I was like 10. I also wasn't allowed to watch scary movies because I would always have nightmares. I had seen just a glimpse of Freddy vs. Jason and I had a nightmare and woke up my mom because I just couldn't sleep anymore. I also have a story about an inflatable spider that gave me the most terrifying nightmare I've ever had, but that's going to be its own separate video. Now, as the little terrified kid I was, imagine my face when I discovered at one point I was living in a real haunted house. It was around 2005 or so. I was probably like seven. My little big brother was around eight and my big big brother was around 12. And my family had just moved to a tiny two bedroom house in Omaha, Nebraska. We moved around quite often, but I loved this old simple house. It had a big backyard, a front yard, sidewalks to ride our bikes. And as we would come to find out, it was haunted by ghosts. Now, how did we know it was haunted? Well, let me tell you the two events that occurred within the house that I think just about confirm it. This first event was just the beginning. This isn't 100% what sold us that the place was haunted, but it still left us puzzled, confused, and definitely questioning. One night when we were coming home from who knows where, all of the lights within the house were off. It was entirely dark, aside from the porch light shining past us. We had opened and closed this front door many times during our stay so far at this house. The house had three children running around, inside, outside, and even riding a scooter into the wall a few times. Yes, we rode the scooter in the house when our parents weren't home. It's, it's fine. Well, just as my big, big brother Cameron walked into the living room, the ceiling light fixture came crashing down, barely missing his head by a few inches at most and shattered all over the floor. We were of course all startled by this moment, but afterward we didn't really think too much of it. Like sure it was weird, definitely, but the house was built in the 50s. Maybe the people who installed the light fixture didn't put it in right. Maybe the vibration from the door opening somehow triggered it to finally fall. Maybe the wind did it. We didn't know, but we did try to rationalize it somehow. We never came up with a good explanation though. This was until a later date when the next event occurred within the house. One night, with our parents gone, because it was the early 2000s and no one really cared if your kids were home alone, me and my brothers decided to play a game of hide and seek. You would think this would be an easy game in a 600 square foot house, but we always knew how to get creative with our hiding spots. After my little big brother Joey found me, we began looking for Cameron. Again, the house was very small, so there weren't many places to check. We decided to check the obvious place, our bedroom. Our bedroom was down the very short hallway and to the right. You could barely see into it from the living room. From where we stood in the hallway, we saw a shadow move on the wall under our window and we quickly turned back around into the living room. I think he's behind the door. You saw that shadow, right? Joey nodded. We agreed he was most likely behind the door, but definitely in the bedroom. As quietly as we could, we crept into the room and swung the door back. <laughs> Nothing. He wasn't there. We scanned the rest of the room. He was still not in there. At this point, I began to freak out a little bit. If Cameron wasn't in this room, then what had caused those shadows? We left the room and I was now really looking for him, but not because of the game anymore. We ran through the living room, checking behind the couch before heading into the kitchen. Once there, we found him hiding behind the washer and dryer. He was smiling, but we weren't. You weren't in the bedroom at all? Are you sure? I questioned him and he swears to this day, he was behind the washer and dryer the whole time. Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, the shadows were caused by you and Joey, obviously. Well, you see, that's not possible. There weren't any lights on behind us to cast a shadow into the room. There was just the hall light above us. 
but that was it. Our shadows would have been on the carpet, not across the room, onto a wall in the opposite direction. I thought very hard about what we had seen. My brothers recalled the shadows being of kids playing together, but I hadn't processed it as that during the game of hide and seek. Or maybe I did and I just didn't want to believe what I had seen at first. My brothers sort of brushed it off, but I continued to think, to try and rationalize it. I thought about it so much, I had a terrible nightmare that night and ended up waking up my parents and asking to sleep with them, saying the shadow kids on the wall were gonna get me. I don't think we ever told our parents about what we had seen because they most likely wouldn't believe us anyway or think we were just playing around. As time went on, I began to forget about our shadow kids in the bedroom. Things went on about as usual, scooter in the house, making potions outside during the day, riding our bikes, the usual kid stuff of my generation. That was until we saw another shadow. I don't remember much about this one. Honestly, I had forgotten all about the second occurrence until I was talking to Joey while getting details for this video. Apparently, when coming out of our parents' room one time, Joey had seen another shadow, this time of a single figure on the wall in the hallway. I think I remember being behind Joey and he turned around really fast, telling me he had just seen another shadow. I got really freaked out and we both went back into our parents' bedroom and closed the door. We moved around a lot as kids, and that house was often referred to as the haunted or shadow house by us when talking about it. I also want to point out that this happened around 19 years ago as of this recording, and I could be messing up some of the more intricate details, but I did communicate with both of my brothers, and they both agree and remember the main points of these events happening in the house the same way that I do. Now, I don't necessarily believe in ghosts or the supernatural, but I definitely don't completely dismiss the possibility of it being real. I haven't had any other actual spooky occurrences aside from seeing the hat man once in middle school, but that could have been caused by other things. Revisiting this distant memory admittedly gave me the creeps all over again. I still have nightmares often about spooky things to this day, so I won't be surprised if thinking about this story conjures up another one the night of recording this. Hopefully, you won't have any dreams about shadow children coming to get you. No, but seriously, if you have any creepy, unexplained experiences, I would love to read about them in the comments. This video was a lot of fun to make, but honestly, a little creepy revisiting these memories. It was interesting to talk to my brothers about them, though, as we don't often bring things up like this in our conversations. Now, get on with your life and have fun.